Hi everyone, I'm Shannon Cox and I'm currently a third year PhD student in the Curtis Clock Lab, part of the School of Pharmacy and Biomolecular Sciences in the Royal College of Surgeons, and today I'm going to give you an insight into my project, how circadian disruption alters the inflammatory response in lung fibroblasts. The human respiratory tract is faced daily with 10,000 litres of inhaled air containing the harmless environmental components, but also potentially airborne pathogens and particles which can damage the lungs. This constant exposure requires a fine-tuned and rapidly acting pulmonary immune system in order to immediately sense harmful threats. However, when these mechanisms fail, it can lead to the development of respiratory disease. 65 million people suffer from COPD worldwide, 334 million suffer from asthma, and 4 million deaths occur each year from respiratory infection. In total, more than 1 billion people suffer from acute or chronic respiratory conditions, making respiratory disease a huge global health burden. Interestingly, these respiratory diseases show time of day variation in severity, controlled by circadian rhythms. So what are circadian rhythms? Circadian rhythms are daily oscillations in biological processes which repeat every 24 hours and are governed by a master clock which resides within the cells of the suprachiasmatic nucleus located in the hypothalamus. Photosensitive melanopsin ganglion cells within the retina relay light input to the SCN. The neurons of the SCN fire with 24-hour rhythmicity, driven by a network of interlocking positive and negative feedback loops, known as the molecular clock, and this drives circadian rhythms. The master clock of the SCN synchronizes molecular clocks found within tissues, allowing for coordination of functions over the course of the day. The molecular clock is present in virtually all cell types, including those in the immune system, helping handle microbial threats more efficiently. Light is the main regulator of rhythms in the body, regulating when we're active versus resting and when we eat versus fast, which ensures our peripheral clocks are aligned to the master SCN clock. However, with modern society, our clocks are becoming disrupted by receiving light at night or eating late, which has consequences for our health. Disruption of circadian rhythms can cause diseases during our lifetime, such as chronic inflammatory diseases, and our lab is focused on understanding how circadian disruption alters inflammatory responses. There are numerous inflammatory mediators implicated in respiratory diseases, and many of these influence the trafficking of immune effector cells to the lung. IL-1-beta is an important pro-inflammatory cytokine, produced by innate immune cells such as macrophages, and is a driver of immune cell recruitment and activation. Fibroblasts are stromal cells found throughout most tissues in the body, including in the lung, and respond to IL-1-beta by producing mediators, which modify the quantity, quality, and duration of the inflammatory response. Importantly, their dysregulation is associated with pathologies such as asthma and COPD, which are also associated with circadian disruption. This is of no surprise as fibroblasts express robust circadian rhythms. We know metabolism regulates a lot of aspects of immune function, such as pro-inflammatory mediator production, and circadian rhythms play a role in regulating metabolism. Our lab has shown that circadian disrupted macrophages have significantly higher glycolysis, and this is characterized by increased HIF1-alpha and IL-1-beta expression. So this brings me on to my overall project question. Circadian rhythms are important for immune cell function and metabolism, and are implicated in chronic inflammatory diseases, including in the lung. So our aim is to determine the role of the clock in lung fibroblast immune function, as fibroblasts are important mediators of the immune response. We're currently investigating this question using the following three aims. Firstly, activate lung fibroblasts with and without rhythms with IL-1-beta. Secondly, we're comparing the differences in the rate of glycolysis and differences in chemokine production. We hypothesize that differences in glycolysis and chemokine production will lead to differential immune cell recruitment to the lung, which may have implications for resolution or pathology for respiratory disease progression in people with disrupted circadian rhythms. Thank you for listening, and I hope you enjoyed this video.